Kyle, and I'm back here again with Steve Patrick, a Nashville-located studio trumpet player and owner and developer of Patrick Mouthpieces. Steve, how are you doing today? Great. Thanks, good, Kyle. good. Thanks for sitting down with us again and talking about uh, trumpet with us. Um, we're kind of talking about collegiate trumpet players today. That's okay. kind of our focus, and we're, we're going to try and offer some advice to collegiate trumpet players um, when it comes to some of the difficulties that they experience. Um, oftentimes, as a trumpet player matures from high school and goes into, into college, they're kind of met with this sort of roadblock of they're used to their B-flat trumpet, they've got it dialed in, they're feeling pretty good, they're playing their college auditions. They get in and their professor or their teacher looks to them and says, um, hey, hey, you've, you've made it into orchestra, you've got to play C trumpet now. Okay. Or, hey, we've got this concert coming up um, in wind ensemble and there's a piccolo trumpet part. Mm -hmm. Or there's jazz band and you're going to have to play flugelhorn. And trying to navigate some of these different horns that they may not be used to. Uh, perhaps you can talk a little bit about um, how you sort of deal with that in a professional setting, showing up to somewhere and saying, oh my goodness, I've got to play C, B flat, piccolo, flugelhorn, all within the same hour, and sort of the difficulties of that and how you get around that. Uh, sure. Uh, I guess it's probably important to say that I grew up being classically trained, but I did not play all those instruments initially. I played solo literature on E flat trumpet and piccolo trumpet, uh, which was at that time kind of uncommon. But, um, you know, as I, as I got to college, I kind of just did one thing. I just mm -hmm. kind of played lead trumpet. But when I moved to Nashville, I realized, oh, I've got to play a, a wedding or I've got to play a wedding reception or I've got to play a session um, just different things. Uh, Easter, I had never played C trumpet, mm -hmm. really. <laughs> and so, oddly enough, I'd play a bunch of E flat and piccolo, but never C. And so, it got to the point where it was like, okay, I gotta buy a C. And of course, you go out and buy your cheapest C that you can find. And right. back then, it was like 500 bucks. And, <laughs> and it was a piece of garbage, you know? Sure. And so, here you are on a horn that you've never played that is the worst you know, example of that horn, <laughs> you know, the D's are super low, E flat, yes. E's. And so you don't know how, to, you don't know to use all your alternate fingerings and things like that. And so what a professional uh, orchestral player told me is if you don't play that horn, you actually, you actually need a better one than the person that's playing it every single day because they, they're used to it. So the first advice is don't cheap out on the horn that you get you might have to look longer and find the steel or find the deal, mm -hmm. but don't just go get, you know, any piece of garbage because it, it, that's going to be difficult. Right. When it comes to a collegiate trumpet player picking an instrument, picking a horn, mm -hmm. maybe outside of their B flat that they're very comfortable with and they're very used to, what is some quick tips that you could give when it comes to selecting an instrument to ensure that that student will be successful upon trying that instrument? Uh, that's a great question. And uh, it's kind of where I live. It's, it's where college kids are a lot nowadays, mm -hmm. but it's, that's where a professional that's working is more and more. If you're doubling, and that's not primarily what you've always done, mm -hmm. you really need to look for a horn that plays evenly and in tune. That should probably be some of your first things that you're, you're looking for in, in doubler instruments. Uh, okay. Just in general, you know, let's just take a B flat trumpet here. Uh, the things that need to be similar when you're switching back and forth are your lead pipe, venturi, um, tuning slide, bore size, bell throat. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same brand. Sure. But it has to, ha it has to be pretty similar. Mm -hmm. And with my E-flat trumpet, and I'll show it in a second, but my E-flat trumpet mm -hmm. uh, and my B-flat it, a couple of B flats. They're all dialed in pretty similar in this opening here. We're looking for um, some commonalities across all of the horns when it yeah. comes to like you know B flat and C and E flat, something like that. So that mm -hmm. it's it gives sort of the same sensation when you're playing. Or what's kind of your your thoughts on that? You want to figure out where that resistance is and be able to lean against it without saying this is radically Mouth. different. Mm -hmm. Mouthpieces play into this as well. It's not just the horn. Mm -hmm. So uh, the back bore shape. Uh, not too much variance in drill size. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, the bigger drill size you go, the more difficult it is to switch around. So if you, if you go really huge because that feels like home base, you're probably gonna really struggle in orchestra when you do West Side Story. But for right. what I do, 
And what, what people might have to do on a recital is they might have to switch on the recital. Right. Or what I do is I'm recording and I, I'm picking up three, four, five different horns because cue to cue or piece to piece, the music is radically different from what we're recording. So maybe you could give us a couple examples of that on some on some of your different horns. So maybe pick a, a B flat and uh, maybe a C trumpet here and, a, and an E flat. Um, play some stuff on each one, move it across yeah. and, and see... Um, see if we can kind of hear the differences in sound that we're looking for and see the, the differences in, in kind of the mouthpiece we're looking at. We'll listen to some stuff and then we'll kind of talk about specifically what mouthpieces you're matching with what, with which horns yeah. um, and how that might help some collegiate trumpet players pick a mouthpiece and pick a horn and find a, an overall you know, success in, in starting to play new instruments. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you what I'm playing on. Yeah. Um, this is what's worked well for me. This is a Blackburn C trumpet. Okay. It's a large bore. I love I love their medium large bore too. Um, let me think of something to play. So there's a that's my seven point three C. So you're okay. getting like a three C cup right. with a little smaller inner diameter because of switching. I don't I can't go to too far of extremes. Even what I do right. is pretty extreme. But um, but later see. in your day, or, or maybe later in that in that exact same session or something, you might get called, or you might have the opportunity, or should I say, the need to play something different, and yeah. and maybe it wouldn't be appropriate on a C trumpet. What are you holding now? Uh, this is my C cornet. Okay. And uh, this is an old ambassador <laughs> B flat cornet that was cut down okay. uh, by a, a good friend of mine and a, a student that did it, and it it doesn't look like much, but it plays all right. <laughs> Great. A different sound for, for perhaps a different use, something that's more appropriate. Um, if, if the style would kind of fit, maybe you could work a little less by playing a cornet right. versus a C trumpet if it's yeah. a little bit more intimate setting. Rather or if than... it's just supposed to be maybe a little more compact and round sure. and lighter. Sure. You know, that's uh, uh, if I'd had that in the right placement for tuning, that right. probably would have been a little darker sounding. Okay, but, uh, sure. Uh, this is my E flat. This okay. is a, a milk E flat with a black room bell. But, and this is my 12.3C. So really similar concept. Uh, if I'm going to be playing up higher on the E flat, I want mm -hmm. it to a little smaller mouthpiece, but I still want the volume. So that's the three C cup again, gotcha. giving me a little bit more volume. Same back bore shape again, switching back and forth. You want that, you know, drill size and back bore shape to be close. is a little different backboards you know you're automatically shorter this is a short shank trumpet backboard sure. fit into a blackburn pipe on a shilky p74 and i really love this horn there's so much working against you just because it's difficult right on trumpet that if you add and compound it with this note's really flat on for a D. This note's really sharp for this note. Mm -hmm. It's it's hard to keep straight. Number one, because mm -hmm. you're picking up a horn and doing different things. But number two, you're you're taxing your chops so much. You want to be able to stay relaxed, blow through, and that's the concept with Patrick mouthpieces is trying to find something that stays really even, so you can just blow through. Well, that automatically helps your range and endurance. Right. So, let me play a couple notes. A little piccolo. perfect but usually even when you switch on a on something you can play a couple notes recital not so much. right right but if you're if you're playing you know you can kind of put your horn down and it's not not like you're playing drastically yes. stuff 
so many things. And I think that brings me to a, a question kind of specifically about the piccolo. That's That tends to be a, an instrument that a lot of collegiate players migrate to at some point during sure. their during their career and you know i think oftentimes kind of one of two things happen you either get this piccolo and the the opportunity is there to just grab whatever mouthpiece you're playing on b flat trumpet throw it in the piccolo mm -hmm. and have some experiences that way or sometimes you'll have somebody else that'll say oh no 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 no! for piccolo you should play this mouthpiece and they'll throw in a mouthpiece that can sometimes be maybe the exact opposite of what you're used to um mm -hmm. when it comes to specific equipment that you pick, like when you're when you're having the the, yeah. the needs to go from big B flat to this piccolo, um, what kind of things are you looking for in a mouthpiece to make that switch easier, so that you're getting some benefits of, of something that's more suited for the piccolo, but you're not so crazy different from what you might be used to on your B flat. That's that's a good question. Um, most people grab a piccolo and they think I'm going to play a lot of high notes, so I need a shallow mouthpiece. Right. That's conventional thought. I have a little bit bigger bowl okay. than almost anything else I play on regularly for, for piccolo. This is my B6. Um, I shouldn't say it's bigger. It's it's bigger for a piccolo mouthpiece. Right, sure. Uh, it's not a shallow cup. Okay. Um, my B6 is kind of my version of, man, this, this mouthpiece must be 70 years old, but it's a, it was a Besson made in England, uh, uh, Besson 6. Okay. And I just happened to pick it up, and it was a really big drill. It was a 25. Okay. And the mouthpiece was shorter, but it was a trumpet shake. And I, I started playing it on my two horns ago. And I thought, man, this, this plays great. It has a beautiful sound. I'm able to do what I need to do mm -hmm. for weddings or for trumpet shell sound, Christmas you know, gigs, Easter yes. gigs. Yes. I'm able to do all of those things. Um, and so uh, I gravitated towards something a little bit bigger. It's a, it's a little bit tighter uh, drill than initially was on it. So it's a 27 drill okay. all the way through and it's a two piece Okay, because I want to be able to dial in what I'm doing with you know cornet lead pipe Sure, and if you want a little bit more compact sound you'd use a cornet lead pipe If you mm -hmm. want a little bit bigger sound you might use a Blackburn mm -hmm. for weddings and different things like that um, uh, But every now and then you have to play something that's a lot higher on piccolo. Brandenburg, somebody, I've oh, been yeah. asked twice now to play Brandenburg for weddings. Wow. And yeah, and it's like, you always kind of get a little bit <laughs> tense up. And when that happens, I basically take my commercial mouthpiece top, okay. my, my biggest commercial mouthpiece top, which okay. is the SP3 in, in the line. But it's, it's basically a medium kind of cup, V cup down. Yeah. And I pair it with a more open backboard Okay. Same drill size. Okay. Uh, and I just really try to relax and not push because the moment you start pushing on piccolo and really pushing, you're in trouble. <laughs> right. You that's this is perhaps the horn that can teach you the most about leaning up against resistance. Sure. And just staying relaxed. And having a mouthpiece that'll work for that, that allows you that somehow kind of the mouthpiece almost teaches you a little bit what's allowed and what's acceptable and right. what's gonna sound good and what's gonna resonate. Um, that'd be very helpful to you know collegiate trumpet players as they're trying to navigate this world instead exactly. of just go for the absolute shallowest or you know their their Bach one and a quarter whatever it might be that they're used to on the B flat um, that may not be so well balanced. Yeah, and speaking of B flat, I mean now we're getting to to home base for me commercial right. setup that I play okay. on, and it's a it's a V shaped cup. It kind of goes straight down and then over. Okay, and this is my my deeper one, which is a medium cup. And it has a 28 drill in the top and a 27 drill in the back bore. So all the rest of everything I played mm -hmm. had a 27 drill in the back bore. Mm -hmm. Same. All of them were the same shape back bore. This is the tightest though. It starts the smallest and, and gradually gets bigger. So even though it's the same shape, it doesn't get as big as quickly. Sure. Um, and the reason I like the V cup for, for commercial is because I switch around so much. Right. It gives me room when I play the V cup that goes down mm -hmm. and over. 
So most people think of a Shilke 14A, 4A, or, or just your run-of-the-mill shallow mouthpiece, Marsequence, Bobby Shoe, Mallow, all of these models that are good mouthpieces. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, is that right off, I'll try to get this on camera, yeah. right as you come from that rim, it's immediately sloping over. Well, if you start swelling, you're going to be touching the sides. Now I jump to another horn, mm -hmm. and now that feels so much bigger, and you go to this... It kind of shell shocks your chops. Right. But if you have a V cup that goes straight down, that plays a little bit like a bigger mouthpiece, even though the overall cup volume is small. Sure. Because it goes straight down, but then it comes over and it has a shallower bottom. Right. So that's where switching between a V cup mouthpiece for your commercial work mm -hmm. and a, a bigger bowl cup, mm -hmm. like a C or a B cup, you can do that more efficiently. That's what I found works for me, and that's what I try to get other people to look at. But again, I was keeping the backboard drill the same on all of those. Sure. Um, I was keeping the backboard shape the same on all of those, even though there was a, a variance. Mm -hmm. um, right. the, uh, the idea of finding equipment that you can switch back and forth with, I would say the most important component of that mm -hmm. is your mouthpiece. Right. The drill size, the backboard. Mm -hmm. and, and finding stuff that fits you. After that, go into trumpets that, you know, that initial spot in the venturi of the lead pipe mm -hmm. and the bell throat. Mm -hmm. Those, keeping something that's similar horn to horn, that's right. not wildly different. You know, not playing a super huge bore, heavyweight horn, and then right. going to a super small bore, lightweight horn. That, that right. makes it pretty difficult. Right. Finding commonalities between yeah. mouthpieces and horns, all of that stuff. Really good information for college players. Um, if they're interested in, in kind of checking out what you offer as Steve Patrick and the Patrick Mouthpiece Company, mm -hmm. um, you can check them out online at patrickmouthpieces.com. Um, you can check some things out there. There's video descriptions of all of the mouthpieces, or more majority of the mouthpieces on there. Um, and if they have questions, they can do that through an email on there as well, right? Yeah. And who does that? Does that go to you? Does that, that, come, that? that come straight to me? So they can actually yeah. kind of interact with you a little bit mm -hmm. and have the opportunity to answer some questions right there. If you're a college player and this is kind of up your alley and, and you're, you're, you're starting to experiment with different horns and playing piccolo and you know being asked to jump around and, and kind of have these demands of your of your college playing life and you're kind of lost in the, in the abyss, right? Um, maybe maybe some equipment might help you out a little bit um, in, in finding these things. I think Steve gave us a lot of great information, a lot of, a lot of really good stuff for us to think about. Um, be sure to check out all of the Steve Patrick mouthpiece um, social media sites. We'll get them linked up in the description. Um, thanks for joining us today, Steve, and, and dropping yeah. some knowledge and, and giving us some, some stuff to think about and hopefully some solutions for all of our playing. Thanks a lot. You bet.